Hello, welcome to Arting with Randall, and uh, I guess I'm a Randall. All right. This is where we kind of left off last time, uh, talking about the palette and how to create it using the CMY and Not K primary colors. Uh, we've got yellow, magenta, and cyan. And if you missed that, you should check the previous two videos. And then I've got um, the two colors that I tend to use to make darks, and that's uh, burnt umber and uh, phthalo blue. But this is a palette for someone who likes to mix color while they're painting, and that's me. I love to mix the colors. That can be, though, a very tedious process. It might not work the best for you, and especially if you have to paint quickly outdoors or if you want to get to some tones very quickly, it might be better to moderate your palette and go a bit of a different direction. So I'm going to show you a couple of paintings that I did uh, using different palettes a long time ago, and I'm going to show you some of the colors you might want to think about and how to set up a palette that's a little more limited. So let's, well, let's get rid of this and uh, this. And for some reason, I was painting on canvas, but we'll go to an actual, we'll go to an actual palette for this. Okay, well, oh! Also, I don't have a lot of uh, all these colors in acrylics right now, so because I'm using those primaries all the time, so instead we'll go to... Oil paint. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> that's acrylic. Okay, so here we go. This is, these are some of my oil paints. Uh, these are different. They're Winsor Newton water mixables. The beautiful thing about having water mixable paint is that even though it's oil paint, you can thin it with water and you can clean up with water, but you can also use oils to thin it and create glazes and all the things you can usually do with oil paint. Um, the problem being is only occasionally can you find magenta <laughs> and sometimes it's really expensive. Not very often can you find cyan. And primary yellow? Nope. Lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, no primary yellow. <laughs> so it's a little harder to do the CMYK method, the CMY not K method with oil paint. So we're going to look at a couple other options. So one of the most common questions people ask me is what should you have on your palette? And I might ask, well, what are you painting? Because if you're painting outdoors and doing a landscape, is it a desert? Is it forest? Is it the ocean? They all have a different palette already. Are you doing figurative work? Are you doing portraits? Skin tones are so much different than all those other colors. So if you want to give yourself a bit of a head start, or if you want to give yourself more of a limited palette so that you're not having confused by all the color choices, you kind of already know the range in which you want to paint, then you might start with a bit more limited palette. Let's, uh, let's put together, uh, say, a landscape palette. We've got some phthalo green here. You see, we didn't have any green at all in the other one, and if you've got a, a, a scene that's mostly green, well, you'll be mixing a lot. And sometimes I love to do that, but what if you don't want to do that all the time? And in fact, I've got two different greens. A yellow shade of phthalo green. So that's a bit lighter. They both look a little dark. I don't have a lot of greens. Oh well, what I'm gonna do then, so I can get my greens, is add in a nice yellow, lemon yellow. And that will get me my cool greens. And then if I want some warmer greens, I might add some cadmium yellow which is a warmer, orangier color. I haven't used all these in those, some of these in quite a while. I've been painting mostly in acrylics these days. Okay. But we've got a problem there. Um, we want more earthy tones. So a very popular one to go with is yellow ochre. This has yellowy tones, but it's more earthy. And we can get those earthy tones really quickly. And guess what? I'm gonna bring out my favorite burnt umber that I used in my other palette. And right across from it, I'm gonna bring out my 
There it is, pale blue. So I can get some lovely blacks off of this. I don't think I have a black here. Oh well, we'll get something that's close to black, just from these colors. And you can see it's a bit more, there's more colors on my palette, which can be confusing, but they're in a, a narrower range. And then I just need a warmer brown, like a burnt sienna. There we go. And that gives me a bit more of a reddish color. And because it's a bit reddish, it actually can be used quite nicely to darken my greens. It's kind of opposite on the color wheel. And I think for skies, it's good to have an ultramarine. And the last color for sure that I'm gonna want is white. And I didn't mention it before, but titanium white tends to have the most covering power. You can get other whites that are better for blending, if you're into that. I like the cover covering power of titanium white, and it's acting like titanium right now because there's hardly any in the tube. There we go. The one other thing I might think about if I was doing this, this gives me a nice landscape, but I might need a little bit of highlight and, and a, a little, even something a little brighter to contrast my, uh, my greens. And it might even be part of my underpainting. I might go with something in the orange or red range. And I wouldn't need a lot of it. So I'm just gonna play with these colors. I'm not gonna do a painting today, but I will someday soon. So here we go. I'm gonna play maybe with my palette knife a bit more. So I was talking before about these greens and all the different kinds of greens I can get out of them. And as I said, a more lemony green happening there. But if I want a more earthy green, I go with that. And even more earthy, I can add in some of that yellow ochre. Then if I want them to lighten them, I've got lots of yellow ochre in there already. Take that out. And something else I mentioned is if we can, we can use a bit of brown and we can come up with a fairly nice, some nice, more neutral tones. More subtle tones. Not quite enough green. And so you can actually see all sorts of tones right in those brush strokes. And that might be further in the background or deeper in the woods. It can be, I can push it towards the brown or towards the green. What if instead of that, we use some of this orange to modify it? Sim it's similar, but it tends to have a little more punch. And well, I should tell you that, that ultramarine blue is great for the skies but if you use it straight it's going to be a little strong and so you're going to need to moderate it for the part of the sky and often it's ultimately way up in the sky and it actually is more phthalo when you get closer to the horizon as it also gets lighter so we can take in something that's a little opposite and it might look a little strong on my palette but we can create some more neutral tones because i think one of the dangers is ending up using all the colors just flat and, and full saturation. And that tends to, to make them over. Hey, I've got a painting to show you. I just remembered these. I did these uh, uh, plein air paintings just a little while ago. I'm gonna be sharing them in another video. But this one is done in acrylics using my CMY, not K method. And this one here is done in oils using a similar palette to what I'm showing you right here. And you can see that in the clouds, that there are purples, yellows, browns, and all sorts of different tones. And you won't get that if you're just using your colors straight. You gotta think about modifying your colors. And here's the key, here's the key. Think about dark and light and warm and cool. 
And so when you're looking at something, is the, you'll notice this cloud is warmer than this cloud, which is warmer than some of the blues back here. These are a bit more blue, a little purple, and a little yellow. And that brings these ones forward. These ones sit a little further back, and those ones sit further back still. Also, look at the sky. I've got a bit of ultramarine there, and down here we come far more into phthalo and cerulean blues. And that gives the, the transition that we commonly see in the sky. Look at all the moderated tones down here. Pretty similar to the, some of the stuff I've been mixing for you right here. Working with yellow ochre, different greens, and uh, a couple of different browns, burnt sienna and raw umber. So there you go. Let's see, what else should I show you? Well, how about we do a bit of that sky transition? We'll start really, I'm gonna grab a paintbrush instead. This paper doesn't work the best. Uh, we'll do it on a bit of this. We're back on canvas. Oh, I need that for my colors. I'm a little insane sometimes. Okay, I got my colors and I got a bit of palette. Ignore this, this is all acrylic. Now we're gonna work with some oils. So I'm going to uh, start with that. It's got a bit of phthalo in there. It's a really warm blue. But as we get up further in the sky, and as I said, I can, I can thin this with water or oils because these are water mixable oils, not your normal stuff. It's kind of a newer technology. And this canvas hasn't been properly prepared, so it's kind of rejecting the paint just a little bit. But now I'm gonna to start to add, and, and phthalo blue is one of my favorites. It's a very rich, vibrant color. But the sky actually doesn't remain the same hue as it gets darker as you go up. It starts to change hue a little bit, that is, it turns into a bit of a different blue, and you'll notice that that ultra remaining has a lot more purple in it. And uh, by the way, you don't have to mix every stroke till the color disappears. Don't have to blend it perfectly. I mean, the brush strokes are half the fun. But here we go. And there's a great example of taking both the transition in light to dark and warm to cool very subtly with the sky tones so the truth is this isn't the only way to do it there isn't a particular way to do it there is an infinite number of ways you can set up a palette uh, absolutely and in fact many famous historical artists can be recognized simply by looking at their palettes uh, there's a, a photographer named matthias Schaffer, Matthias Schaller, and he has taken photographs of the palettes, the actual palettes of famous historical painters. You can even tell from these palettes what period of their painting career they were in. You can tell which paintings they made from that palette. The truth is that a limiting palette that lets you do a few less colors can often be key to simplifying your process, finding a voice that works for you, finding your own style, your own, your own approach, right? In reality, there are so few limitations in art. And so sometimes we can impose them on ourselves and that gives us new freedom because we don't, we aren't paralyzed by the choices. Limiting your choices can be a great thing. So you might also consider creating a limited palette and even paint with just two colors, a warm and a cool. And that's it. And see what happens. Pick two of your favorite colors that are kind of opposite on the color wheel. Play with a limited palette and experience what it's like to work with fewer colors. And that's not what you have to be married to for life. You can choose another two and then you can add another one and go, well, I would really love to have yellow in this. And Eventually, you might find your own special palette. So go ahead and play. Don't worry about rules. Don't, if somebody says this is the palette to use, go ahead and try it, play with it. But again, it's not yours and you don't have to stick with it for life. Here's an example of when I tried a limited palette, a warm and a cool, a magenta and a blue. And look at that, darks, lights, warms and cools. And this whole thing is painted in about 20 minutes. You can play 
and experiment and it doesn't have to be a huge commitment but in the process you'll learn so much if you found any value in this video i would really appreciate it if you'd click the like so that other people will get to see it too i showed you i'm using winsor newton water soluble mixed uh, oil colors far easier to use than regular oil colors because you can clean them up with water and you can even thin them with water they're a bit different and take something to get used to but i really have enjoyed them and they're definitely a lot less toxic and so I'm going to include some affiliate links I get a tiny commission should you purchase them through these links and that helps to support the channel so I really appreciate it well that has been our series on painters palettes and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below I'm sure I'm going to be covering more of this but in the future I'm probably going to have the palettes ready because I'm going to be painting okay we'll see you then